Hi guys, I came back from Toronto. I had a nice week with my best friend. It did me some good. I actually had at least five good days without thinking about infertility, which felt good. I felt happy. I felt grateful for that little peace of mind for the while while it lasted. So I'm gonna try to figure out a way to have my escape in my own house because I figure that every time I come into my home I have so many things that I'm looking at that are torching me that I'm hopeful that it would be eventually our family but I, I think that in a way it's not helping me uh, with being at peace with our struggle or grieving or whatever like it, it's depressive for me to actually watch gender reveal stuff, pregnancy announcements, uh, nursery tours. So I'm going to try to find a way to have an escape at my home, uh, uh, doing stuff uh, that are not actually making me think about infertility, like making me think about what I wish I had. And instead, I'm going to just focus on the moment and enjoy whatever we have for now. So, of course, I'm still going to continue the nursery. By the way, it's not nearly done. It's a mess right now in that room. But I'm going to do it soon. I'm going to paint soon. <sighs> Can't wait to start. But we had a little bit of last winter storm last week. So, for sure, I can do it now. But soon, soon. I'm really happy about that. So, except for the nursery that I'm going to continue doing. Uh, the rest is not going to be baby related. So unless like I have a lot of baby showers coming or um, gender reveals. Uh, so for sure I'm not going to be able to not think about that while I'm going to make a sewing. I'm going to make a sewing project for that. So maybe a stuffed animal or something. But except for that I'm going to try to do some projects that are not baby related. Which is going to be real helpful for me because I feel like um, the moment I stepped into my house and I went on computer, first thing that I watched was my, uh, the, the families that I do see that are, that I've been going through infertility, that I have a family right now, and I follow them, and as much as I'm happy for them, I feel like right now I'm not in a place where I can actually enjoy those shows, those, uh, vlogs, uh, so I feel like I'm, I'm sh not sure it's a good idea that I should watch them for now, until... I'm at peace and in a better place in my heart, and for now, that's not it. So, uh, for now, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to probably do some scrapbooking, read more, and I'm going to try to find a list of things that I can do that it's actually not just hiding myself, because that's not what I wanted. I always wanted to find a balance with my emotions. I want to be at peace, you know, and that's what I've been trying to do since uh, last December. So... I need to find some projects that are making me happy without hiding myself. Like, you know, when I read books, it makes me happy for a period of time, but I know that I'm hiding myself in a different reality. And that's not what I want. I want to be able to enjoy this reality without having to suffer all the grieving and isolation of infertility. So if I find a few good ideas, for sure I'm going to keep you updated on that because I feel like we all need to have a little escape, a good healthy one. And um, that's what I've been doing. And I'm still doing the three things to be grateful for every day. And if you don't know how to be grateful for in the morning, you can do it in the evening so that way you're grateful for all the things that happen during the day. So like, let's say uh, I had a good day in Toronto, so I'm grateful for... Uh, spending a good evening in the poop cafe and uh, with my best friend and I'm grateful because we enjoyed our time I'm grateful because I was free of thinking of infertility I'm grateful for a bunch of things but my idea is to be grateful for three things because when you're struggling with infertility it's really hard to see that there's things to be grateful for because it's all around like you're going to go watching TV. It's going to be ads on of Huggies or, or stuff about babies, baby-related stuff. And uh, you're going to go uh, at the Walmart. There are going to be a bunch of ladies with kids, a baby bunch all, all around. So there is no really 
any way that you can hide from it. There's no place where you can feel like like you're gonna be okay and not having to think about infidelity because it's everywhere you're gonna go. It's always gonna be in your face. Uh, if you see someone with three kids and that's what you want, you're gonna look at them and be like, they're my age and they have their family all done and I'm I'm like I'm I'm, I'm not even started, you know. So and it's hard not to compare yourself to others. So I feel like I need a safe place home. And I don't want to bring all that negativity of, of all that enviness into my house. So that's why I'm trying to be grateful. That's why I'm trying to not put as much as baby related uh, project that I'm doing on my house. So I'm, I want to do a bench. I've always wanted to do a bench because I love those, you know, those church benches that you can put around your table. Because I love those. And we have a bunch of chairs that we could throw away because they're broken. And I'm always scared someone's going to sit on them and it's going to break under under them. And that's why like, I'm scared and I'm anxious whenever someone sits on any of those chairs. And even though my boyfriend tells me, my DA tells me that they're safe, I should worry about it. I know that they're old and I know they could break. So for me, I want to do a bunch. So that could be a project that I, is not baby related. It's a project that can be useful now and at this moment we don't have any kids so i don't need a project to be too much involved in the future i need to have projects right now now so i'm going to put maybe more uh pictures to make more scrapbook um pages uh, for my album i have an album that i made uh that i started at the beginning of our relationship and my dh and i uh we were together when i was in a uh, prom so he was my date so I have a, an album of pictures of us and our fur babies. So I might continue on that road and some trips that we did together with a bunch of few friends. So I'm going to continue on that album and maybe finish. I have a few, what, 20 pages left of that scrapbook album that I can do. So that could be nice. And um, I want to continue a few quilts. Um, but I'm going to do crib size quilts. I'm going to start on one for my bed. So our bed, me and my DH boy bed. So uh, a double, well, maybe it's a queen size. I think it's a double, uh, a twin. No, it's not. No, it's a full. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's a queen, queen size. Anyways, I'm going to make one quilt for our bed and uh, some pillowcases. And I'm going to do a bunch of stuff that is not baby related. So try to find a way to not be so involved in baby related stuff because... I feel like it's torture sometimes. It's good, but then it's not so good because you keep being hopeful because you actually watch it and you, you can't wait for it to be your time. But when it's like me or like you probably too, when it's going on for years and years and years, eventually it's, it's becoming torture. So I'll try to be uh, careful around that and not torture yourself too much. Uh, and uh, as for my appointment with my doctor, I'm really, really excited about it. I really, really hope the doctor's going to tell us okay for clomid or red vaginal pessaries and i'm really really glad because i feel like if that doesn't work i'm gonna start again the vitex supplement that i had uh it didn't work last time i tried them but then again your body changes over time and i feel like my body's changing and i'm getting older i'm i'm 30 so maybe maybe who knows maybe the vitex is gonna do me better now uh, because i'm I don't know. I'm just making up some stupid excuses to try it again. So I'm going to try that again if ever the doctor said doesn't want me to try Clomid again. Uh, Clomid for the first time because I tried Primera, but it's not the same thing. So else from that, I'm going to try to change my diet because I really, really want to try to bring better foods to help. I don't know. I'm going to try to find some foods that are good for people like me who do not ovulate often on their own. And if I find some things that do work, I'm going to break, like, I'm going to tell you that for sure. I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to tell you about it. Because if it doesn't work, I'm not going to tell you about it because it's, it's not going to be worth it. But if it does work, I'm going to come back and tell you all about it. Because I know we're about a bunch of people out there who wants to change their diet and, like, maybe bring healthier foods and whatnot. So... Who knows? If it works, it works, you know? So, and there is a second trip that we're going to do. So, I went to Toronto. It didn't cost me any that much. It cost me, what, about 100 bucks for a whole week. 
uh, which I was truly amazed because it's a cheap trip. I took the bus. It's a mega bus, so it's really, really cheap. And uh, once we're there, my friend, she knows that I do not have a lot of money. So whenever I go there, I tell her, look, uh, I don't plan on going out too much. So if we could do a little few activi activities, affordable ones, that would be nice. So that's what we did. Uh, so it didn't cost me much more than 100 bucks, which I'm really, really happy about that because it's my budget. And I'm happy when I'm able to go by with the budget that I told myself I would be okay with. And uh, the next trip that we're going to have, uh, it's in, I think it's April. Not sure. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, and that's going to be a weekend, me and my boyfriend. And his friend has a chalet. So we're going to go there cottage and we're gonna go we're gonna go there and uh we're gonna enjoy ourselves a little bit so see there's always a way to make affordable vacation with your dh and still be able to save up for IVF. so that's what i want and that's what he wants and i'm really really happy so i'm gonna try to continue uh being that positive and if i have a bad day it's just normal i'm gonna i'm gonna be okay like, we're always going to be okay, because even though we have bad days, it's just because it's a struggle, and it's a long-term struggle. It's not It's not just a few months of struggling. It's a few years of struggling, and that's when it's harder, because you don't feel like you have peace of mind at that point. So, anyways, I wish you the best. I'm going to pray for you, baby dust, and try to be at peace. Try to find peace. Even though sometimes it might be hard. Baby dust.